Jackson. All right. So I am going to uh, show you a few more things that have to do with the um, the lesson, the art lesson that we're doing this evening. And I want to go over some supplies. So I did already show you these are Colorex paints. This happens to be from Pebio, and these are watercolor inks. Now I've done classes with uh, my peeps here on on whatnot, and those paints were not water uh, not watercolor. Those paints were permanent. That means once they were dry, you could write and you could put more paint and more water over top of them and the color was not going to lift. These are true watercolors. So what that means is you can go back in with water, get an area wet and lift color back out just as you would with a watercolor that you might find in a tube or in a pan. What I like about liquid watercolors like these Colorex is that mm, 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 they are so juicy and they are you know, super concentrated and they are ready to go. You just put a few drops in your palette and usually I have to add a bunch of water because the color is so concentrated and then you are ready to run. Here you can see where I put down the color, the drops straight from the dropper and then blew it with a uh, straw. <laughs> to get this really fun effect here. And behind me is a um, an elephant painting that I did in the round on this beautiful, uh, man. I think it's called Man Mary, um, watercolor paper from Italy. Mm, beautiful, but um, both the elephant, the white part of the elephant and the white part here, the words, were put onto the paper using a masking fluid. So Pebio has a masking fluid called drawing gum. And um, this is the smaller size, 45 milliliters. You'll be able to see these various supplies when you go to my website. Hey there, superpowers, CC, welcome in, welcome in. Um, so when you, and, and if y'all have friends that don't have um, or aren't, on whatnot, I am live on my YouTube channel. So if you were to just go to my website, uh, which is Deets Art here, I'll show you, like this is what it is on Instagram, but you can just go to deetsart.com and that's my website. And then this is who I was doing Friday's demo with Opus Art Supplies. So if you're in Canada, yeah, they're amazing. Opus Art Supplies, they're on the West Coast of Canada. And then this is the company that uh, uh, sponsored my demo on Friday with these paints. So that is, I would uh, suggest you follow them, Pebio underscore USA Canada. So they do uh, North America and I'm a senior specialist with Pebio on their product ranges. Um, but to get back to this, this is a, what's called a masking fluid. And when you do watercolor, and even when you do uh, lighter washes of acrylic, and I've even seen people apply this really heavy and then use just brushed acrylic over top of it and it still pulls off of the paper. So it masks off or preserves an area. So for instance, where the word Colorex is here, Colorex was preserved using this latex drawing gum. Now, if you're allergic to latex, Pebio also has a non-latex version. So, um, you know, if that is a concern, you can look up and you want specifically the non-latex version of it. Um, here's how you can tell the difference when you're looking at the bottle. This has, a, see the dark blue on this bottle, dark, dark, dark blue. And up here it says natural latex. If you, uh, and then this is the pen, so there's a masking fluid pen that also has the dark blue. This is the one with latex. Then they have a light blue version. And for instance, this is the pen of the light blue. But you see how this is a light turquoise? Both the bottle itself and the pen have a light blue background. That's for the non-latex. So some people um, are more comfortable with the non-latex masking fluid and I'm going to be showing you how to do the masking fluid here because it comes in really handy especially for the eyes on the anime oh my gosh 
it's going to save your life <laughs> to have a good masking fluid to do that. And um, so the difference being, okay, like besides the fact that la liquid latex has a little bit of a smell to it, but some people are more sensitive to things like that and that it may be a strong smell to somebody else. Uh, to me, it doesn't bother me at all. But if you are sensitive that way, you may want the non-latex, which I've found with no odor at all. The thing with the non-latex is that you need to use it, put your paint on, wait that little bit of time for the watercolor paint to dry. Hey, Fox and Hound, welcome in, welcome in. Um, you need to wait for it to dry and then lift it up. Uh, so after your watercolor dries, you're gonna be rolling off that um that masking fluid oh hey there foxhound we're doing great thanks for the question appreciate it <laughs> um and so the thing with this kind of um, the non-latex masking fluid is you're not going to want to leave that overnight the latex masking fluid i've left overnight uh, i had a a famous watercolor painter say, oh, I love it because I can leave it for a week and then I, I go back. Yes, superpower CC, the, the, um, the pen can definitely be a game changer. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to use those pens. But more importantly than showing you how to use the pen is how to clean the pen when you're finished. <laughs> because a lot of times I have people say, hey, I, I used it once and then I couldn't use it again. And I'm gonna explain why that is when we get to that part and how to, um, ooh, hold on a second, everything's moving over here. I'm trying to <laughs> stop it from moving. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to clean the pen when you're finished because these liquid latexes, if it doesn't stay wet, it's going to dry out the tip and it's going to dry out a little sponge that's sitting inside the tip. But I'm going to show you when we're over the table working with the masking fluids, how to clean that. And so I'm able to use my pens over and over and over and over again. Um, besides the fact that the pen comes with a spare nib, do you see right there, the spare nib? And this one, the same comes with uh, a little smaller nib, but you see how it's uh, spare because it comes with the nib already in it. But then, you know, the Pevio did it right, I think, by uh, putting, uh, giving us a spare when they did their markers so that, because um, you know how it is, especially when you're a mixed media artist, those nibs uh, take a beating. <laughs> And I have had to replace them before. Oh, okay, so I'm I'm working with the latex version of the uh, drawing gum when I'm doing my demonstration. And uh, but if you're working with the non-latex version, just realize that you're going to have to pull it up. Um, I wouldn't recommend. You can try it. It depends on the humidity in your area here in Florida, where I am it's very humid and and hot and so i find that the non latex version of this um tends to get sticky if i leave it on too long whereas um and it, even though for the most part the regular latex drawing gum doesn't do that i do find that if it's really hot and humid where i am that i have to pull that up on a, in the same day as well so um, those are just some considerations for you with that. So that's going to be the um, masking fluid. And then also, and, and let me show you this about these uh, bottles as well. So these are the new bottles from Pebio of Colorex. And they have a, a little ring on the top that tells you what the number is and what the name of it is. And then when you open this, there we go. When you open it, you'll see, oh, I must've gotten a hair in there. <laughs> you, you'll see a beautiful glass dropper, see that? So um, with a little um, narrow tip to it. So that is the new bottle. Now I have lots of older bottles uh, that I've used for a long time. Let's see, do I have one here? Mm. Well, I've actually converted over to all the new ones, but the old ones, maybe is this an old one? Let's see, let's see. Yes, 
Okay, this is what the old tip looks like. Okay, where it's flat on the top, it doesn't have that little narrow uh, top. That's important when it comes to um, refilling the markers because there are markers that match these. <laughs> They're phenomenal. So the, this is a felt tip, a felt tip marker. And there are 60 colors of the bottles like this. And then there are 29 colors of these markers. However, you can actually fill empty markers with any of the rest of those uh, 31 colors, except, uh, except of course for their are some metallics and there's white and those the particle sizes are too big in order to um, fill a marker with um, the metallics here like this is gold and there's mica inside there and mica is kind of a large particle and so it won't suck up into the marker these markers have a um, inside this is an empty one so inside there is hey cindy stitches welcome in welcome in we're talking about um working with watercolor liquid watercolor paints and uh, inks and uh what the same kind same brand markers so inside here there's a little window right here and inside there there's a wick and the wick is um felt just like the tip is felt okay so this is an empty one and we're going to be filling it right there in the back end there's inside here you put you have to have the one the types of bottles that i showed you that have that glass tip that comes down because that fits inside here the ones that are flat on the bottom of the droppers won't fit in there so well thought out products yes exactly <laughs> i know this was like a total game changer right here these are amazing i love these um i love them because for instance see this blue turquoise right here this is the turquoise blue because i'm in florida i use the turquoise blue and this bright fluorescent pink all the time which means that you're going to wear out you know you're going to run out of ink there but the number that's on the top of here, so this one's number 24, I believe that's what it is, yep, 24. I can just look at my bottles and look for the bottle that says 24. And then I can take this ink and refill this marker, just like that. Amazing, <laughs> these are so cool. <laughs> I'll show you that when we go over the table, I'll show you how you can actually fill. Like this doesn't have a lot of ink left in it. It's subtle, but I can feel the difference. And so I'll go ahead and I'll show you how I would take this and fill this. Now, if I'm using a blank one like this, uh, for instance, I didn't have the violet color. So this violet color, I had it in the liquid, but I didn't have it in the marker. So I took the liquid and I was able to fill a marker. And when I fill the markers, what I do, let me find one right here. What I do is I write, I write here in a marker. Sometimes I, you can see I use it so much. Sometimes I have to go back and rewrite it. But this, I put the name of the color. This says turquoise 24. So um, I did the same thing with the violet because I actually didn't have... Uh, one of these in the violet. And so um, I was able to just fill up an empty one. It was awesome. <laughs> now here in the United States, you can also buy the um, the empty ones in a set. So I think it's a set of six, I believe. Um, and I definitely recommend that. If you're gonna buy the empties, definitely buy the set of six. Now you don't have to just use Colorex paints to go inside these markers if you have any liquid ink um now i'm not sure about the permanent inks because i haven't tried the permanent inks in here but any of your watercolor type um very flowy paints you can put inside here remember it's going to wick up that uh, piece of felt that's inside there um, and it also has to wick into the end of the um, the tip. Now, if you mess up the tip, like I said, I'm a mixed media artist. I mess up my tips all the time on my markers. Um, 
the nice thing about these is that you can buy a little kit that is a replacement just for the tip. And it has a little remover so you don't have to get your hands all dirty trying to remove it. Um, what I have in my studio here, where are you? I have an old ratty pair of pliers <laughs> that I keep in my studio for if I need to do anything like that, you know, like pull things apart. Um, but the nice thing is when you buy the set of tips, it comes with a little remover that will grip it and pull it out so that you can put the new tips in. Eh, so nice. So nice. And I'm going to be showing you how to use those on an anime because, um, and not just anime, all different kinds of artwork. What's nice about using the markers, of course, is you can get into narrow little areas like this and get a little more precise if you don't have the uh, tiny little brushes in order to be able to do that. All right, other supplies. I, um, as I'm working with these paints, the liquid paints, um, I need some of these droppers. So I always have droppers on hand, like it at. Um, I keep one in my water bottle or in my water, my clean out water, um, because very often, the, as I said, the paints are so concentrated, especially if you start mixing colors. So you've got twice as much volume usually of your color. Um, you're going to need a lot more water. So that's why I like to use these in order to um, add water. Then also... When I'm working with masking fluid, I don't always want to be as precise as using a marker. I want a line, but I want the line to be a little more organic. So in order to do that, I use these. This is called a fine line applicator. They look like pens and they have a needle tip. So this is, there are two sizes. There's this yellow size here and the blue size here. I. I like the blue one myself, but as you can see, I haven't busted out the yellow one to use it yet. <laughs> but when you, these screw right off here, you can actually use this for all different kinds of paints. A lot of artists use this for fluid acrylics as well. Um, and so if, like I said, if you go to my website and you go to, which is uh, deetsart.com, and you look at that last article, which was about uh, Sophie the Giraffe Project, it's using these exact Colorex paints. And there is a link for you to find these. If it's not in there yet, I hope I added the fine liner link. If I didn't, I will add it tonight. Um, but the nice thing is, see how it's empty? Woohoo! So I can fill this with the, um, I use the large size, the 250 milliliter of the masking fluid. But again, lots of artists are using this for doing um, like fun, drippy line work um, with fluid acrylics. So that was the base part where you fill it and then you unscrew the top here. And there's a needle inside the top. And then you see the needle here. So what I like is that when the um, when the drawing fluid comes out, it's a little more flowy and a little more organic. And that's actually what I used here on the um, elephant painting here was I made my lines with one of these. So I'll show you that when we get to the um, drawing gum portion. I'll show you the pen. I'll show you using a brush and I'll show you this. All right. And brushes. Um, this is probably one of my most favorite brushes right here. This is the number six Princeton Velvet Touch. So I do have a link to in my um, uh, on my website on that blog article to a set of these Velvet Touch brushes. What I like about them is, do you see the tip is really sharp right there? They're super snappy. And um, I like that. I like that when I'm painting. <laughs> and my other favorite brush to use, uh, and then I use a bunch of different ones as well, like big wash brushes like this to do the um, backgrounds. Like for instance, this one, I was talking about Sophie. So to do the background here, I want to use a big washy brush that can either be a flat like this, or it can be a rounded one like this. Okay. Um, this is called a mop brush. So those are good for doing those backgrounds. And then this one I love 
this is also part of the, isn't that the Velvet Touch? Yep, the Velvet Touch line. And it is called Willow's Blender. And I like it for two things. One is the tip is stiff, which you wouldn't think you would want that for a watercolor painting, right? But I use it as a little scrubber. So if I drip paint by accident somewhere where I don't want it, I real quick dip this into water and I can scrub this on the top of the paper and it saved my life a million times. <laughs> and then the other thing that I love about it is it has like this hard plastic handle and then there's this really neat angled end to it. So sometimes when you're doing watercolor, you can get really interesting texture uh, in the watercolor by using a sharp implement like this, but this is perfect. It's not too sharp to where it'll tear the paper, but it's the perfect like roundness and um, angle for you to be able to scrape back in to your watercolor. And actually I use this for acrylics as well, to scrape back in and to get some interesting texture with the back end of that brush. So this again is called the Willows Blender from Princeton Velvet Touch. So I definitely have that one on hand all the time when I'm doing watercolors so I can correct my mistakes. <laughs> oh, and then the last thing that I use is a uh, some sort of brush rest. So these I got from, I, I bought tons of them from China when I had my art studio and I just sold the last one like two weeks ago on um, what, <clears throat> excuse me, on whatnot. So Sorry to my whatnot peeps, but they're already gone. <laughs> All right, let me make sure there aren't any chats over here on, let's see. I just wanna make sure I'm not leaving any be, anybody behind in the chats over on um, Facebook, but nope, well, it looks like we're good, yay. Um, I'm sorry, on YouTube, not Facebook today. All right, so let me get my brushes set up here and uh, make sure that we are ready to go. And then I'm going to bring you over top of the table. And when I do that, um, if you're somebody that gets like car sick, I'm gonna tell you when to close your eyes and then when to open your eyes, okay? <laughs> I don't want anyone getting sick on us here. All right, so hold on. We're gonna get you off of the table stand. So close your eyes. Go ahead and close your eyes if you get car sick. And I am going over top of the table here. Okay. Keep your, oops, sorry. Keep your eyes closed. See? <laughs> All right. Let's see what we have going on there. Now, if, um, if you want to see the full screen and you seem to have um, words in the way, and you are on whatnot, you can swipe to the left and that will cause the words to go away, okay? So that'll give you a clear screen if you wanna look at something more closely. Let me make sure that I go up a little bit here. This is my slant palette that we're gonna be using for uh, blending, mixing, all that good stuff. Okay, cool. So I had shown you this earlier. This is the, this is my Instagram and then Opus Art Supplies if you're in Canada. And then this is the brand Pebio underscore USA Canada if you're here in, uh, well, the United States or Canada. <laughs> all right, let's put that aside there. Uh, so tonight's theme, as I had mentioned, is anime. And I went to, um, the Canva AI, <laughs> and I was like, anime boy, anime girl, different colors of hair and all this kind of stuff. And then that's where I got this young man right here, this character. And then um, and he's a little bit complicated because of the whole sweatshirt kind of jacket right here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you this young lady, or it could also be a young man. Um, and this is the one that we're going to do tonight so um, that I can show you how it's a little more simplified and uh, that'll make it a little bit easier for me to um, do this more quickly for you this evening. 
Now I did mention that, um, you know, anime eyes, there's something special about anime eyes and the way that you do anime eyes and using the um, drawing gum is integral, integral to doing that. So let's talk about the eyes. Let's see. I want to make sure that that is in the picture. All right. I'm going to need to move some of my water out of the way here. Okay. So now you can see that in the middle right there. Good. Um, so this is an example of moving through using um, the drawing gum to create the highlights on the eyes. And what I'm going to show you here is there's some blue right there. So I did the beginnings of the eye, and then there's the blue right there. That blue is this drawing gum. So what you'll notice is there's blue on the bottom here. And so before I use this, I will shake it, and then I will wait, normally wait 10 to 15 minutes because you wanna get the froth or the foam on the top here to settle down. But my trick is rather than opening this jar and leaving it open because you're going to end up getting a bunch of gunk around the top here. I'll show you. In here, you should be able to see some um, like of the latex beginning to dry, okay, and get gunky. So you don't want to leave this top open for a long time, whether it's this large one or the small one because then you'll start to get a film on top of it and you end up with uh, stringy bits of latex. So what I do is I shake it and then I pour it into a smaller container like this. So this one ha is beautifully um, homogenous, meaning it's been shaken, but it doesn't have any bubbles in it. Do you see that? Which makes it a lot easier to use if there are no bubbles in it. Um, and so I put in, as much as I think I'm going to need for a project in a small container like this, and I work from the small container instead of leaving the large container open. And then that helps to preserve and keep the, um, the water base of this drawing gum from uh, evaporating. All right. Now, you might have noticed when I started to show you this large one that I had a couple of brushes attached to it, as well as this is a gum eraser. It's what's used with rubber cement. And um, my sister-in-law came up with this idea <laughs> to be able to help keep them together. And that's just using a rubber band with your brushes and your um, your rubber cement eraser so that when you need them in your studio, they're all together. <laughs> now let's talk about brushes for doing drawing gum. Actually, there are different types of devices that you can use to apply drawing gum. Another thing you can use is these. Um, this is a, some people call them a color shaper. It says color shaper there, but this is um, silicone. So when the drawing gum dries on the silicone tip, it's super easy to roll it off or take it off because once this is dry, it, it's kind of gummy and you, uh, you just roll it off. Um, so some people like to use these kind of silicone tipped um, different brushes, if you want to call them that. This is just a smaller version of the same thing. And I've used this before in the drawing gum as well in order to apply it because then you dip it. You just have to dip it more often than if you have a little brush. But the thing with a little brush is that the end of the brush, you don't want to use any good brushes for this. <laughs> you want to use sort of ratty brushes. You see how this one like paints coming off of it and everything, but it's the right size of what I want for my lines. And so what I do is um, the end of this is all full of latex. I'm never going to get that brush tip free of latex. Now, what some people do is they t they dip their brush in soap first, and then they use it with the liquid latex. Um, and there are many different brands of masking fluid. 
I'll just put that out there too. This just happens to be Pebio's brand that I'm fortunate enough to work with Pebio, and so I have it on hand. Um, but there are other brands that make masking fluid as well. And it's gonna be the same thing with your brushes um, in the way that you use them. What some people do is they will take their brush and they dip it in soap or they get some soap on it, let it dry, and then they start using the masking fluid. But I have never done that. I don't want to do that because I don't want to get soap potentially into my, uh, you know, in and around my paint. It just, that doesn't sit well with me. What I do is I just use a brush that it doesn't matter that the end of it is, is kind of ratty and all stuck together from the uh, liquid lucite. What I want is, do I have the shape that I want? Does the little tiny brush come to a point? so that it'll hold enough paint, uh, enough of this um, drawing gum that I can get off the amount that I want. So don't use your good brushes. Hey, Becky Huslander, I see that you just came in and Florida Glass Girl, welcome, welcome. Um, so use a ratty brush, experiment with different brushes, but do not, do not, do not, do not use your good brushes with drawing gum or any other kind of masking fluid, okay? <laughs> Now, there's another type of um, device. That's why I said devices, because it's besides brushes. Um, let me grab it here for you. There's this thing called the Incredible Nib by this company, Graphics. I love the Graphics company. I don't know if you can read it right there. G-R-A-F-I-X. Excellent company. Great people over there here in the U.S. And this has a really interesting hard nib and a different shape at the bottom here. One's like a chisel tip. So if you wanted to do um, something that looked like calligraphy with the masking fluid. So for instance, here, do you see the Sophie? That's preserving the white with the masking fluid on the paper. And I use this drawing gum on, um, I actually use that with the pen. But if you wanted to do something that was more like calligraphy, there's a calligraphy tip or an angled tip to the end of this device, which they call the incredible nib. And it's great for applying um, masking fluid. All right, so <laughs> when you're in the store and you're in that area and you're like, what are all these choices? Well, now you have an idea of what those are. Uh, all right, and then let's go ahead <clears throat> and I'm going to show you how I do an eye with this. All right. Um, just so you can get a feel for how that works. So this is, oh, you know what? I'm going to use a smaller piece right here. So this, if you look at anime eyes, for the most part, they just, they go here and here, and there are a few little uh, lashes there. Okay, you don't have to get too fancy, but it is a, a kind of a particular style. And um, what we're going to do right now, I'm just going to use for sake of uh, getting it done. <laughs> I'm just going to use the color X marker for this one. Uh, so we're going to do an eye like this. And so I'm just going to come up. Now you're going to notice that the uh, this particular marker the color comes out almost looking gray, not black. Oftentimes what I'll do is I will use the marker to do the initial lineup, and then I will go back in with the actual paint. So remember how I said there are matching paints that go along with this? Oh, can I find it? <laughs> Hold on, where is the black? I thought I pulled the black out. I didn't, it's in my box right next to me here though. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm not going to open it over here because I'm famous for getting dots all over my work. I'm going to actually put it over here and I'm just going to put a dot out. Like I said, it's pretty concentrated. You don't need a lot. That's the ivory black. And then um, for this, this is using a brush. So this one's actually a Princeton also. It's called the Princeton Lauren um, size two. So I like this one for doing some of the smaller work. Oh, let me put a, a, I always, when I'm doing watercolor, I always have a paper towel in my hand. Okay, so let's get some paint on there. So I've got my basic outline. Now I'm gonna come over top of where the marker was. 
so I can do a little more sort of detail with that, right? And darken that line. All right, there we go. All right, that's the basic, the basic anime eye like that. And of course, as you can see, you can put your, they like to have their little uh, eyelashes here. So let's just do some fun eyelashes. There we go. So that's the basics of the anime eye. Now you also want to put the iris in. So we're going to just do this for the iris. Well, it needs to be a little bit bigger than that, doesn't it? And now I'm not going to um, do the rest of the iris because I'm actually going to want to put a white spot in the iris there. So what I'm seeing is usually I will um, just put part of the uh, shadow up here and then I'll do the rest of it after I've put the uh, masking fluid on. But that's okay. We're going to do it just a little differently right now. Um, so this, I'm just going to set this aside. Remember, it's watercolor. So I don't have to rinse it out if I'm going to use that same brush with the same color later, right? Because if I just put a little bit of water on it, bada bing, it's going to reactivate that color. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, okay, so now we've got... Um, one of these little brushes here and i've got my masking fluid in a separate little container and the funny thing is this brush because of the fact it has so much latex in it it's actually going to act just like this brush with the um, silicone tip <laughs> because it's not going to absorb it's just going to sit on top oops there's a hair there Okay, so now we're gonna go across the eye and down below the eye. We're gonna do a bit here. The nice thing about this drawing gum is that it has a color, that blue color to it. So do you see the blue color there? That way, as you're painting, you can see where you've put the gum. All right, let's do a little bit over here. And then we'll go back in here and we'll do a little bit over here. So this, of course, is going to be the light where, where you want to preserve the light there. Because when you put the color in here for the eye, that's going to preserve the white. All right, um, let's go ahead and do, I want another little bit, but instead of using this, I'm going to show you a different um, I'm going to show you using this one right here. So what I do with this, I have to get the, the liquid latex all mixed in. You can see the blue there from the color dye coming out. And usually before I do it on my actual artwork, I'll do it on another piece to the side. But of course, this is a piece to the side, right? <laughs> so if I get a paper towel... I often will start this on a paper towel because sometimes there are little bitty bits stuck inside there from the last session. But the beautiful thing about these is they have a pin right there that goes down inside there. So it helps to keep it clear. You do get a little bit of, um, of drying residue in there, but for the most part, you can see, boom, you get a nice line like that. But if I squeeze harder, I can get a more organic edge to it. So I'm going to just do this. And now what you're going to notice is that that is much thicker than those other lines that I put on with the brush. And um, the trick with that, because I use this a lot, a lot. I like the line that I get out of it. Um, oh, for some reason over on YouTube, we got a little uh, delay. But OK, we're back. What I do is I take my paper towel and I take an edge of the paper towel. And if I, you know, because sometimes I hate to wait, right? I want it to dry faster. So then I will just touch the tip of the paper towel like that. And then it lifts up a bunch of that. And then it's not quite so thick and it will dry faster for you. And that's very helpful. I do that a lot. I'll have a paper towel and all the, you know, I keep folding it to get all the little corners. <laughs> all right, let's get this just a little bit more like that. 
All right. Once again, it's all bubbly. And I want to get rid of some of that. So I just go like this. Oh, it's so fun. I love the way it picks it up, it just wicks it right off of there. And then that way it'll dry faster for you. Okay. So now um, this will dry. Let's see if this one's dry. That one's dry already. Let's say that you put it somewhere and you go, oh my gosh, that was a mistake. What am I going to do? <laughs> All you have to do is just wait for it to dry and then you just roll it right off and then redo it. It's that simple. And it only takes a minute. Hey, Red Raptor, welcome in, welcome in. I see you're back. DK Byrne, thank you for joining. Yeah, so once this is dry, it's still just a slightly wet. But once it's dry, you just roll it off with your finger or you take it off with the, um, the gum eraser and then you just reapply it. It's so simple. <laughs> All right, let me clean, let me go ahead and get this like this and then I'll show you how to use the marker and how to clean the marker. So this is always the trick, right? Is getting that needle right back in there. There we go. And then, so make sure you don't leave that sitting for too long without the needle in it because the latex will get um, gummy inside that needle. Um, they do sell replacement needles like this top section here, either the blue or the yellow. So you can get a replacement if you need to, but there we go on that. Now, um, a lot of times when I want to hurry things along, I use a heat gun because I'm just that kind of girl, right? I want to um, <laughs> move along. So with the Colorex inks, feel free to use a heat gun. However, the caveat that I have is that I don't recommend using heat to, um, to hurry along the drying of the drawing gum. It generally dries pretty quickly, but if you use heat, um, it can cause it to go gummy and to stick to the paper. It causes it to um, like melt into the paper and then you can't remove it. <laughs> so you don't want that, do you? You do not want that. Oh, so don't use a heat gun to hurry along the uh, drawing gum. After the drawing gum's already dry and you've got um, a little bit of other color here, you can gently heat hit the color with the heat gun, but I try not to go directly on top of the, uh, the drawing gum with the heat gun. All right, let's try this one real quick, just so that I can show you. This is the, uh, the color shaper that has the silicone on it. Let's do a, a mark with that. Yeah, that works well. It's good. I like it. It's just, you can't get too much. You can't get too much off of these, I find. So let's say you wanted to make dots. It's really easy to make dots with this, like this. Or in this case, it's it looks like uh, with the shape of the tip, you can do sort of a teardrop look. So if you wanted to do raindrops or something, you could use a tip like this to do, um, you know, press down or to do dots. So these, uh, these are good. These silicone are good for that kind of thing. But I find they don't hold enough for me to want to, uh, you know, go continuously, which is what I like to do. Um, so we've got this for continuous. Let me show you the marker. Where did my marker disappear to? I know it's here somewhere. Oh, where, oh, where are you marker? I'm cracking myself up. Here it is. <laughs> In an effort to try to be clean and organized. All right. So same thing. You need to shake this up. There's actually a, you can hear that. There's a marble inside there. So you want to get that nice and shaken up. And you know what? I don't want this to splash everywhere. So let me just close that back up. And now... These, um, just like any other sort of pen, you're gonna have to press it several times to get the, um, to get that drawing gum inside there to flow. 
So that's why I normally have a separate sheet of paper off to the side and I do all of my initial testing on that separate piece of paper off to the side here. Okay. So I'm pouncing it up and down because you have to do that in order to get the, uh, in order to get it to flow. And sometimes I find that I get little bits, little bitty bits of latex on the end here, and I have to clean that off or clean it off on a paper towel like that. Okay, so this is, it is flowing. Now I just pressed it down and held it for a while, and that'll get you a little more flow like that. So now I've got flow down to the tip and I can write. So here's the, I just put S-O-F-I-E there. Um, and it's like a light blue. That's a very thin line. Now, if I want to get a thicker line, a trick that I do often is I'll just take a little bit of this and to really help it move along, I'll put just a little bit on my side paper. Remember, this is going to be the paper off to the side. So I put a little bit down there. Let's put the lid back on. And then I dip into here. <laughs> and that helps to get it started also. And then I can get a little bit thicker line. Now, once you have some of it down, if you try to go back over it a second time, what'll happen is it will lift. So if I try to add more to this one, right now what I'm doing is pouncing up and down because if I push like this with the tip, it's going to lift that um, <clears throat> drawing gum right back up. And I don't want that. So that's another technique that I use is I just dab, 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 dab if I wanna go in and do something very specific, like let's say I wanna add a couple of dots here. See how I'm pouncing it? So now I've got, I've got a couple of dots on there. So the pen is good for that little bit more detail like that. Okay, I think we have enough on the eye right there. <laughs> we can let it dry for a minute. Now, when I finish a session with the marker, I want to make sure that I don't get a bunch of gumminess on the tip and inside here, there's a little sponge. And if you don't clean it out and it gets dry, it'll get clogged. So we wanna, in, in order to be able to use everything that's in here, we want to clean this tip when we're done using it. So let me show you how you do that. You're gonna have a little container with water. So let's put some, I'll just pour some water in there like this. So you're going to have some water in there. You do not want to rinse this in your sink. Okay. Never, 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 never put this stuff down your sink. Can you imagine why? When it dries, it turns into liquid latex. So you don't want the inside of your pipes <laughs> to get gummed up with liquid latex. So you're gonna do it in a separate cup like this, right? So uh, it's super easy to pull the tip out just like that. And I can see there's a little bit of a balled up latex on there. Bink, and I put it in the cup, all right? So I'm gonna start the cleaning process there. And then, can you see that? That's where the little sponge is inside there. And I wanna get that sponge cleaned out. So I put the top in there like that. And you can see the water starts to go cloudy, right? You see the cloudiness? Um, and so I wanna get that, I wanna get that sponge real good, real well. I wanna clean that up real well like that. And then I let it, um, <laughs> before I let it dry, I actually go in with a paper towel like this and I squeeze on it and make sure that I've got it clean. There we go, see that blue on there? So that helped to clean out that little sponge. Now, sometimes there's a little bit of residue in here 
and then I'll use a toothpick and I'll go in there if there's a little bit of residue stuck in the tip here. And I pull that residue out. And then this part right here, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of the liquid in there. So that's gonna get all gummy unless you clean it out. So we just do this like that. That gets it nice and clean. And then we go in and we clean that off like that. And now you can see that tip is nice and clean inside there. Sometimes what I'll do too, I'll let gravity help me out. And I'll do that to be sure that I've got it all out of there. Now, sometimes if I've left one and I haven't done this part and I go back in, sometimes i'll find that there's a little bit of gummy stuck down in there so i just use a toothpick and i just gently go around the inside here and then i pull out any of the gumminess that might have gotten caught in there so now those will be clean and ready you just reassemble this like that and then whoop, come here little tip all right there it is so I just clean this off and then I reassemble it. There you go. Now that's clean and reassemble it. I have um, on occasion seen for myself that the end of that tip sometimes can start to splay out. And that's when you just stick something in here. I have a, um, a needle tool. You stick something in there. You grab the spare tip out and then you just, you saw how easy it was for me to pull that tip out just like this and just replace it. Now see, there's a little tiny bit of uh, leftover which must have been in the sponge there. Little tiny bits. So I'm gonna take those out. But now that will be clean and ready for your next session. If you don't do that, and depending on how it's stored, sometimes that sponge can go um, hard or the tip can also um, get gunky and stuck. But this way, you'll be able to just pump it and get going for your next session. Woohoo! Love that. And then, of course, this is the one that has the silicone on it. And there was a tiny bit there that just came right off. Um, the same is true with my little brushes like this. I'll just put them in the water like this to clean them when I'm done with a session. Now, the way that I dispose of this water, because remember, you're not putting it down your sink. <laughs> Never want to put this kind of water down your sink. No, 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 don't do it. Um, you just take your paper towel and you stick it in there and soak it up and then throw that in the trash, just like that. Done. And now that's ready for your next, uh, your next session. All right, any questions on the drawing gum? Any other questions on the drawing gum? I think I covered just about everything <laughs> I had to do with drawing gum. Oh my gosh, I love drawing gum. I use it all the time. Okay, let's um, go ahead now and come back to this because this should have had time to dry. I remember I said, oops, what if I spilled some or I put it in a place where I made a mistake? You can use your finger or you can use this, uh, what's it called? It is a uh, rubber cement pickup or rubber cement eraser. You can use that, but you can also just literally roll it off with your finger, just like that. So that, you would roll it off and then you can just go back in and correct where it was that you put it. All right, it's that simple to correct a mistake. Even the piece of paper that I have off to the side that I'm pumping and I'm practicing on before I go to my actual artwork, <laughs> that piece of paper, when all of the, the drawing gum is dry, I rub it off and then I continue to use that same piece of paper. So it's awesome. You don't have to throw it away. You just get rid of these little bits of the um, drawing gum. All right, so let's go ahead and put a little more color on here. I still have my brush with that little bit of black in it, right? 
So I'm going to go back over this area right here. I don't have to worry about keeping a white spot. You know how when you do the pupil and you're having to, to keep that little white spot there? I don't have to worry about that because that blue of the drawing gum is repelling it. <laughs> It's awesome. Uh, all right, then I'm going to go ahead with this and um, rinse it, but I just dip it in my water and then I clean as much color off on a paper towel first before I swish it in my water. And that lets me use my same water session a lot longer before I have to clean my water out. Okay, let's go ahead now and put the iris color on what color do y'all want you want oh you know what i'm gonna use well i have green i have um what color eye do you want i have the violet i have green i have um a beautiful turquoise blue and i have this like incredible color called jade you see that i love this, this is like my favorite color right now i'm watching the chat to see if anybody has a special request what color you want me to put in the eye for this Okay, if nobody picks, I'm going to pick jade because I love the jade. So when I go to use a color, I generally swirl it. I don't shake it. I swirl it like this. And if it's the white or the metallics, there's two golds and a silver, then I use a stick to mix those. But for the regular colors, I just swirl them. And then there we go. We don't need much, right? It's concentrated color. And then I'm going to come in here. Let's, I have my brush plenty wet. Okay, there we go. Ooh, look at that color. It's between a green and a blue. It's so cool. I just love it. Okay. So again, I'm putting in the color of the iris and I'm going directly over top of that, uh, that blue from the drawing gum. I don't have to worry about going around my white. Okay, there we go. There it is. Okay, so there's the eye. And everywhere that I put the um, the drawing gum is repelling. You see it repelling? Ah, it's awesome. Okay, so now that way, um, when this dries, I can just go in and take that off. Now, I am going to mention something that's happening here that I'm seeing that you may not be seeing. And that is wherever I touch the black is starting to run a little bit into the paint here. Why is that? Because this is watercolor and it gets reactivated with water. <laughs> so just remember that these paints will reactivate with water. So if you put one layer on top of an underlayer, um, that underlayer is going to start to reactivate and uh, just bear that in mind. Okay. Um, I actually want to make this a little bit, a little bit darker blue. So I'm going to add, because I want some, uh, some more contrast with the white for when I take the, uh, the, the drawing gum off. So let's make it a little darker on the inside here. Oh yeah. You see how they just sort of blend together? Nice. Okay, there you go. They're just wishy-washy blending. One of the things I love is like if you put some color here and then you use a little spray bottle, this is just a spray bottle of water. You can get it to run like this. It just, the drippy drippiness of it is so pretty. I love that effect. Okay, so we're gonna set this aside to dry and we're gonna get to the anime girl right now. But I wanted to show you in particular how the uh, drawing gum works really well, really well. Oh yeah, it's looking nice. I can't wait to roll that off. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how I transfer an image like this onto a piece of watercolor paper. I'm gonna move this out of the way a little bit. Uh, so I use something called transfer paper. So this happens to be two different brands, but it has graphite on the back of it. Actually, this one I used a lot. So let's see. 
What you're looking for is the darker side is going to go down on your paper. Hey, Flower Power Brooklyn, welcome in, welcome in. And let me find a, I need my, my Canson pad. So you can do this on, um, my favorite is to use a watercolor paper. And you can do it on either regular watercolor, which has a bit of texture to it, which this one does. Or you can do it on a, what's called a hot press watercolor, which is smooth, which is more um, for illustration purposes. And um, also Bristol paper, I know you can use, if you're not gonna do a lot of color, a lot of wetness, you can use Bristol paper, which is an illustration type paper as well. Um, but I'm gonna use watercolor paper because I'll probably end up using lots of water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's take this. I'm putting the darker side down like that. This is called transfer paper. And then I'm taking my image and I'm going to put her on the paper here. All right. Great. Now um, you can use a clip to hold these two together. What you wanna do is you wanna be sure that you're grabbing both the transfer paper and your image. But usually what I do is I just put it there and then I hold it in place. And you're gonna use a pen like this, just a ballpoint pen or what some people do is they'll use a stylus. So let me show you a stylus. So this is a stylus, a ball stylus with a little ball on the end. And what I'm gonna do is outline the uh, image here. Now, instead of the stylus, I prefer the pen. And the reason is because I can see where I've already uh, outlined. And so I'm gonna start over here like this. The, this particular kind of transfer paper, you don't wanna get too, you don't wanna go too heavy because it transfers very well. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going around here. Let's do the chin. Remember this image came from AI, so I am free to use it. And uh, there's no copyright on it because the Supreme Court here in the US has already found that you can't copyright your AI images. Now, if you reproduce the image, then you can, um, as I have, I painted it. As soon as I painted it, it became my image, my painted image. And that I can copyright. All right, here we go. Now, there are some shadows here. I'm not going to do the outline of the shadows. I'm actually just going to paint the shadows in. So you do want to have your reference picture handy as you're doing your painting because you want to be able to um, see <laughs> where you need to pop those shadows in. Okay, this is the, I'm still working on the hair. Okay, there we go. So I can see where that ear is. Let me just put a few lines in here for the ear so that I know what I'm doing there. Now, let me lift this up so you can see. See, I hope you can see that image, but I keep my hand in place <laughs> so that it, uh, let's do this. These are kind of interesting looking. I'm going to use the drawing gum in those areas. That way I can flood the area with some hair colors and not worry about it there. And let's get the hair underneath. Ooh, here's the neck. And more hair. I picked a relatively simple image. Boy, when you have a more complicated image, it can get really interesting <laughs> to do the outlines. Okay, there we go, up to there. And then what I really liked about this was uh, the way her collar looks, her or his. And then we're gonna bring it here, comes down here. Yeah, cute. And then a 
going on in here. All right. What I want to see in the uh, chat is, has anyone else done transfers like this? Does anyone else use transfer paper to do transfers or is this new to you? Like you haven't seen this before. If you've watched some of my uh, lessons, you might have seen it already. <laughs> because I use transfer paper a lot for imagery like this. All right. I want to make sure I get the shoulders here. And these are cute little straps like this. All right, I promise I'm almost done. I'm not doing it too uh, perfectly, but I do need the last thing I have to do is the shoulder over here. I'm going to go this direction so I can see it better. But like I said, you don't have to press hard. You can just go lightly. There she is almost. Well, I have to do this part and this part. Let's do this and around here. I noticed, see, if I hadn't used the pen, I would not have noticed that I did not do the, uh, the top of the collar here. So it's definitely helpful if you use the pen. All right. Hey, Crafty Stamper. Welcome in. Welcome in. Cheeky Turtle Resale. I'm showing how to um, out do an outline to create an anime character. And then uh, we're going to paint it in using watercolor inks. Okay, so underneath here, I have a piece of transfer paper. And as you can see, as I'm beginning to move over the transfer paper, it's leaving an image there. Okay, this is the area of the eye here. I'm gonna do the interior of the eye and then around here. And then, uh, so I'm not doing too much detail. get the eye and for those that don't know this is a an AI generated image so I did this with AI all right I believe that's everything so let's take a look here oh now this eye didn't come out that much so I need to go a little bit harder and a little bit put press a little bit harder here there we go and then that, let's get the eye part here. Let's see if the eye showed up. Okay, that's better. Mo better, mo better. I'm gonna press a little harder over here as well. There we go. So if you do that little bit of extra, little, you press a little harder, you'll get a little more of the paint or the uh, graphite coming down. Okay, there we go. So now the image is transferred. Excellent. Okay. So it was that simple. Now, if I um, decide that I want to change the image around any, this is actually graphite, this paper right here, this transfer paper. So I can go in with a, um, an eraser. And let me get an eraser here. I can go in with an eraser and I can lighten the lines a little bit if that's what I want. Sometimes you don't want the lines to be quite so dark when you're working with watercolor. If you're working with acrylic, you can go right over top of it with an opaque acrylic paint and then it won't matter. But if you're doing watercolor, you might not want the lines to be quite that dark. So you can do this and erase the lines a little bit, and that makes them a little bit lighter. 
like that. There you go. Now this hair is going to be black, so I'm not that concerned. Another thing is this picture <laughs> ended right here. What if I want the head to keep going up? I just take a pencil. I have my black wing over here. So I'm just gonna use a black wing pencil and I'm gonna extend the hair up to here. You know, just give it a natural curve, but I'm just doing that with a pencil because your um, this transfer paper is just graphite on the back. So you can get the same sort of effect. Now this person, this uh, anime character, I'm gonna keep the picture close by so that I can follow along with the highlights, with the fact that these are white. I've got some interesting uh, lines over here. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of the drawing gum masking fluid. So let's do that first, where I'm gonna go in and lay some of that in to the eyes and up here and these little marks on the hair. All right, so I'm just for speed, I'm gonna use this one right here. And I'm going to, again, this has the drawing gum masking fluid inside here. And I get it started on a paper towel to be sure that it's, it's running. And then the first thing I can do is, of course, just sort of fill these in, these circles. Now, I just got a lot out there. So remember what I said, if you seem to have too much on there, or if you have a bubble, you can just use the tip of your paper towel and you can lift a lot of that up. That way it will dry faster. You don't need a lot. Okay, let's use this. Now, I, of course, I could be doing this with the pen as well. That's quite a lot there. Lift it up. There we go. I just find I like um, the speed. I tend to like the speed of this. I know that it wastes a little bit because you end up getting extra in there. But I like the organicness of the shapes. Okay, here we go. We're going to lift that up. Because there's a lot there. Keep folding over your paper towel and just lift it up. Let's do this one right here. I try not to go too much over the lines because if you go over the lines, when you roll this off, you're gonna end up seeing the line there and you don't wanna see the line underneath the white. You can always go back in with your black of the hair and fix that, but I try not to go over the lines with the white. All right, let's get another little bit of paper towel here. Lift that right up. Yes. Now there's a little tiny, um, right here, there's a little tiny dot. I am not going to do anything with that yet. I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to roll it off um, because I don't want it there. Okay. Now over in the hair right here, you've got some really cool um light marks so i'm actually going oh now i just got a bubble out of here so i'm going to pick the bubble up there we go it broke on its own so i'm just going to do that that's like a, a light on the side there okay so the other area that's most important of course is the eyes so i'm going to go ahead and work on the eyes and Ooh. Now, I just, <laughs> a little bubble was there and it fell. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to wait because I can roll that right off. Oh, you know what I'm noticing? This part right here, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of drawing gum there. So I'm going to soak it up using the paper towel so that there's not quite so much there and it'll dry faster. There we go, like that. Another little corner here. The end there. Put it right there. 
it lifts a lot of that out. See how it's lifting it right out? Ah! I'm so glad I discovered how to use my um, paper towel to do that. It just makes it makes my life easier. You don't have to do this. You can just leave it longer to let it dry. But I, I like to um, get on, get along with my paintings, just get them going. So I want to be sure that I lift that. Lift the extra. OK, I can actually lift the extra here as well because I want that to dry more quickly, too. That doesn't get rid of it. That just lifts some of it. OK, so now we're going to go into the eyes. And I'm looking at the image and then drawing the drawing this part in right here. And then some down below here. Okay. And then over here, I'm also doing the same right there. And then some back in the back here. There we are. So that's where the, the most white is. You see the most white here and here. Now there's light here as well. Let's do a little bit more, maybe in this area right here. And a little bit more in this area right here. There we go. Now, there are a lot of bubbles <laughs> that just came out. So let's go ahead and um, pop the bubbles just by, if you see there, there's, oh, the bubbles just pop themselves. Nice. But I don't want to have quite so much there. So I'm going to suck up the extra just like this. There we go. Nice. You generally don't need a heavy application. You can use a heavy application, especially if let's say you were gonna go over top of it with acrylic, you might wanna leave a heavier application. All right, there we go. But with watercolor, you can go with a light application. There we go. That just helps it dry faster. All right, now, this little bitty bit here and this little bit here, these should be dry, these little spots that got on there. So let me go ahead and use the rubber cement pickup and I will just pick those right up. So now they're not going to mask anything out. Right there. Nice, lifted. Okay, so the areas that I wanna have white, I just preserve the white with that blue. And the nice thing is I can see the blue, so I know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, I'm setting her off to the side. Let's go ahead and work on this area down here. Eyes. Actually, we can work on the face, can't we? We can work on the face until the, this part dries. Um, so with the face, I like to use a color called, um, the base of what I use is called pink beige. So it gives you a lovely light skin color. And then it's super easy to darken it if you want a more rich chocolatey color by adding a little bit of sepia to it. So these um, anime characters tend to have the very light Asian skin. So the, um, the pink beige seems to work really well with that. Now, when I put it out here, it has kind of a, a dark uh, essence to it, doesn't it? And we don't want it dark, we want it to be light. So what you're gonna find is you're gonna have to add water to that. And I usually start out super blush and then add more layers in order to bring the color up. So let me get a brush that's a little bit this is a filbert. You see the round top there? And I'm going to, before I put it on here, I'm going to test it. Remember, I have all those tester pieces next to me. So this is a tester piece of watercolor. Okay, nice. That just gives me very blush. Very, very blush there. 
Oh, there's not enough, not enough to do the whole face. So let me do that again. And I'm gonna add a little bit more water. You wanna be sure you have enough. <laughs> All right, there we go. So now what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna start in an area where there might be more um, shadow anyway, because you see how this is a little darker than that was, because I need to add like one more drop of water to it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start in a shadow area just in case it's dark just in case it's dark and I have to adjust the color and make it lighter. Oh, that looks good. Okay. So this is nice because we can do a wash over it. Now the area where the, um, where there's going to be the eye lash and the cut crease, I can actually just use one of the markers there. So this, this is one of my favorite brushes for just doing this kind of thing. Now, what I'm noticing is this area of the eye should actually be white or I should not put any paint in there. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna use my little Willows blender and I'm gonna come in with some water and a paper towel and I'm gonna lift that color up, lift it. This is my favorite. It's the Willows Blender from Princeton Velvet Touch. So I'm coming in here and I'm lifting that up so that it just blends in there, but it leaves this area right here white. Okay, let's put a little bit more of this on here. And we'll bring that in. The nice thing is now it's like almost like color with, uh, you know, color by number, right? What you are going to notice is that these paints do dry darker. So you can see now that the face is beginning to dry. It's coming up a little bit dark. That's why I like to start in the shadow areas because now I'm adding a little bit more water. Okay, there we go. And I can add a lot more water. and blend the edges here a little bit. It is watercolor, so it will come back up to a degree. The color will, if I wanted to um, kind of scrub it and get the color up, I add a bunch of water like that. And then I go back in with my paper towel and I can get, um, I can often get my highlights that way. Okay, let's do this. Just sort of getting the face. So usually I will start with lighter colors and then work my way up to darker colors. But you can see now it's a little too light for this area. Take this in here. See some of the areas like around the ear are gonna need to be darker. So let me pick up some of what I had on here, why not? Okay. I'm not too worried if it goes over into the black because I'm going to be putting a dark color up there for the hair. Okay. And then in the ear here, you see how it's dark, dark, dark on the middle and the lower, and then you have a shadow right here, as well as there's a shadow on the neck. So let's darken this just a little bit. We'll take a little bit of the pink beige. And then, uh, let's see, instead of using the um, sepia, which is super dark, I'm gonna go with something like, let me see. Instead of the sepia, I'm gonna use um, this one, which is raw sienna. So raw sienna can help with some of these skin tones. But what I notice is it's quite dark. So I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to put it directly in with the pink beige because otherwise it'll just be way too much. I just added a bunch of water and I only want to pick up just a little bit 
and I can mix it up here so that I get the intensity that I want, but I'm getting it in here. And then I can add this dark color down in here and create the little bit of a shadow along the edge. And I'm gonna have the shadow in the ear. And a shadow in here. Now, often I will, like, this is the beginning of a shadow. It's not quite as dark as I want it, but I want to just get the beginnings of the shadow, and I can come back in later and make the shadow even darker. There we go. So we're beginning to get some shadow going there. If I want to darken the shadow, I can pick up a little bit more of this brown. But what I like to do is I like to let it dry, see what the intensity looks like, because the intensity will change. <laughs> and sometimes if I put something down and I say, oh, that's a little too, too much or too dark, I will literally use my paper towel like this and lift out a lot of the color. And then that way you end up with um, something that's a little bit lighter like that. Okay, let's clean this off. Now, I'm going to go ahead and lift some of that because I don't want it to stay too wet for too long. You see there? And I can just go back in there. Now, a color that I really like, but I'm not seeing it here on my table, is um, a color that I like to use together with this pink beige. Well, I like to use a tobacco color, but I also like to use a sanguine color. So this is the sanguine because it has a little bit of that kind of toasty reddish kind of look to it. So let me put that one right here and you'll see this one's a little more brown and this one's going to be a little more red. So you can see this one looks a little more yellowish and that was our um, raw sienna is a little more yellow and the sanguine is a little more red so this is closer to the um, shadow color that i'm going to want to use but i'm going to move from this big soppy brush to a smaller brush right now because i want to be able to get in here a little bit more easily so i start by getting the brush wet i'm going to bring in just a little bit of that that uh, sanguine and I'm going to work. Yes, this color is going to be a little closer to the uh, pink beige. What's up, baby? One of my doggies is here. One of my doggies. Okay. So that's going to bring it a little closer to the, um, to the face color. There we go. Now I've got a little bit of a, uh, a bloom right there so you see where the color that other color the uh raw sienna started to bloom in there but i'm not going to touch it until all of this is dry and then i'll go in with the willows um, blender and i'll pull that color out because if i try to pull it out now i'm going to create more bleed <laughs> so i want to sometimes you have to be patient and wait for that um, all right, let's go ahead now for this mouth. I can lay the mouth in using a marker, right? I don't have to wait. Where is this is the sanguine? Nope, that's not the sanguine. Where's the sanguine marker? This one? Yes. So this is this number 33, but I put it in a marker. So I can literally just go in like this and draw right over top of the mouth line like this and create the mouth. So you can see where that a lot um, when you have parts that need um, to be precise. Super easy to do that. Let's do the nose, which is just right here. There we go. So easy peasy to use this. Now, if I wanted to feather the edge of that, I'm going to use a little bitty brush to feather the edge. Uh, let me find a little one. 
a little brush to feather the edge with. And I just get it damp. I don't want it to be too wet, so I'm, and then I'm gonna come in here and just get the edge of that wet. And then I can get a little bit of a bleed. There we go. So now if you look, because this is the watercolor, it's just coming out of a marker. You can still go back in with a damp brush and get some bleed going. Let's do the eyes. I'm just gonna put some blue in for the eyes. And the darkest blue is over here. So we're gonna do the darkest blue first. And of course, right here, there's actually almost a little black in there for the shadow. There we go. And then we're gonna drop in the same color over here near the hair, like that. So this is starting to get the eye color in there. And then there's some more in here. And then again, they want the, uh, I'm just working right around. I'm working around where I have those white spots. So I've already preserved the white. I just want to get the blue in here and a little bit of the black for the shadow. So I'm going to grab to create the shadow over here. I'm going to also grab a little bit of the black to go along with the blue, just to put it on the same brush. And this one's not quite as dark. Let's add a little more black here. Now what I'm doing is I'm reactivating the black that was in there that was already dry. Remember, it was already dry. And I can reactivate that. So same sort of thing. Bring it down here. There we go. We'll bring this a little bit more in here just to get some variation. Instead of the black, I could have used um, an ultramarine blue, which is just a darker version of blue as well. Okay. Bring a little bit of that in here. There. All right, and we're gonna be preserving the white. Oops, I can see a little tiny section there where the paper is white, and I don't want the paper white. I've already preserved the white. So there we go. And let's grab a little bit more in here to deepen the color. There. Then it'll really show up against the, um, the white when we take the white off. All right. Now, of course, inside here, there's going to be need to be some more shadow. So what am I going to do? I'm going to grab a little bit of this sanguine. And let's drop a little bit of a shadow here like that. It's not very dark. It's giving the hint of a shadow. I prefer to um, go lighter and then add more if I need to. <laughs> it's just a little bit easier to do that. So here we go with, again with the sanguine. I'm looking and seeing if there are any questions. Hello there, Tim Tam. Welcome in, welcome in. I'm showing, uh, working with liquid watercolors to do um, anime characters. All right, so we've got a little bit of shadow going there. I actually want it a little bit darker right in here. There, I've got my paper towel here. Let's get some more shadow going in here. There we go. And then shadow in here. So normally when I'm doing this on my own, I'll drop in a shadow two, three, four times, depending on how diffused or how dark I want it. I watch the um, artwork as it's developing. 
to decide if I need to add more or not. There we go, right there. All right. Now I do want I do want this area of the ear up here which is slightly darker than the face. So I picked up some of the uh, pink beige here, which is what's in the face, but I added just a tiny bit of the sanguine to it for the ear. And I can already see that this other uh, shadow color is starting to, I wasn't quite dry. So it's starting to bleed into there, which is okay. I don't mind a little bit of bleed in. That's fine. Let's darken that just a tiny bit. I want it to be a little bit different from the face. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Now underneath the neck here, we want to have a um, dark color darker than this. Let's just go in with the sanguine, which has water in it. Let's see what happens. Oh, nice. It's not quite as dark as I want it to be. So what's going to happen is I'm going to have to um, layer it, let that layer dry, and then put another layer in. Okay, hold on. For those who weren't here earlier, let me show you the, uh, the other anime. Where is he? So there was a lot of push and pull in here. By push and pull, I mean I put color down and then sometimes I would get it wet and I would pull color back out. So let's say that we want to have uh, this area right here highlighted. I'm going to go in with just water, just water in here because this is watercolor. So I can do just water and then use a clean paper towel and I can lift some of that color out because these are real watercolors. So it's uh, even though they're liquid to start, they all do the things that you expect watercolors to do. So you can start to see this area right here was lightened just a little bit from that. And while I'm at it, where's that brush? I would lighten just a little bit more right here. So it's just adding some water, letting it soak in for a minute, and then taking the paper towel. I'm just letting it soak, 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 soak. And then lifting some of the color out. There we go. All right, so I'll do that. Often I'll do that push and pull a bunch of different times. You can see here, I darkened it. And then I went back in with water and I lightened it again. And you can see the difference from here and the line over here for the shadow. The same on the jacket here where I've got some uh, shadows, but then I had to go in really dark here to get the other shadows. So lots of what I call push and pull to get the, um, the various tones. Now there's just a little bit more here of the neck. I'm just going to drop that in right now. If you have any questions at all about the liquid watercolors that I'm using, the brushes that I'm using, the um, what's called uh, drawing gum, which is the masking fluid that I'm using here. Now, generally, I don't worry too much about these edges right here because often I will come back in with a marker, either a micron marker like this, right? Because this gives me the graphic, the black graphic line, or um, they also make that same marker with uh, in different colors. So I might have a brown one or a blue one. Um, you can also combine watercolor pencils with this. So I could come back in and do some definition and some shading with the watercolor pencils that will also work. All right. See that neck does not look dark enough to me. So I'm just going to drop in a little bit more of that brown to kind of darken it. 
There we go. It's following along the same sort of a uh, family of colors. All right, let's go ahead then and do the hair. So in this area here, I want to do black, but I also want to do blue. <laughs> <laughs> because when you see the beautiful highlights in um, an Asian person's hair, when their hair is beautiful and clean, it's not just black. There's like this electric blue that shows up. So this is um, ultramarine blue, and it gives just the most beautiful dark, dark blue. So let's put some of the dark blue in there. And then I also want to use some of the black. So where's that ivory black? So you can see that's just a couple of drops. So that was two drops of black and two drops of blue. Let's see what happens when we mix that. Now I'm going to go back to my big brush again, my big sort of moppy brush. Let's see what our color. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I want. Remember how you want to have your sample paper here you see the blue undertone yep that's what i want i want black with a blue undertone but i want a little bit more black just a tiny bit more black so one more drop of black and then i'm going to add some water there we go yes so now this is nice and soppy little bit more black. See why I use the sample? <laughs> That's why I use the sample like this right next to me. Okay, a little bit more black. You know what'll make this a little more black also is besides throwing in the ivory black is throwing in a little bit of the sepia. So the sepia will help deepen it a little bit as well. So let's go back to the big brush. Yep, that's better. Mo better. I can tell already. So that's more black and it's going to dry with a slight blue undertone to it. Okay, so let's use this to start mopping in the hair. Remember, you can always go back over it again with another layer to deepen the color. So this is my initial layer. And what's lovely is I can go right over top of this drawing gum, the masking fluid, and with no fear, no fear at all. Oh, I can see I just went outside of the hair because <laughs> I was getting happy, but that's okay because when I put this in a frame, that's going to get cut off. So I am not going to worry about that. All right, let's come down in here. I want to sort of follow along with my lines. And the nice thing about a brush like this is when you look at it on the side, you see how um, sharp it is. So you can actually get a nice sharp edge there. You can cover a large area very quickly, but then you can also get a nice sharp edge. There we go. And then let's come down in here. All right, so you can begin to see that develop. And this kind of thing, I definitely end up putting multiple layers on because as it, the first layer is going to soak into the paper, and so it's not going to come out quite as dark as you might want it. Okay, let's come in here, use the edge. Come in here, use the edge. What you might notice sometimes is that where you put the um, graphite, graphite repels watercolor paint. So sometimes you're gonna see the graphite lines. And then what I find, what I like to do to uh, sort of fix that, you can either go in with a second coat of your watercolor or you can just use a pen like I just showed you, like your Micron pen. 
and just define the edges with the micron pen and the micron pen will go right over top of it. I'll go right over that uh, graphite. I'll show you that in just a second. Okay. So right in here, the graphite is showing through the watercolor, but it's okay. It's all good. Now, sometimes some people don't like you to do this, but I do this often is I turn the page so that I can get the right angle to do a continuous line like that. I want to be sure I'm getting the line right. So I turn the page. I know some watercolor purists are like, don't turn the page. You have to turn your brush and you have to turn your hand. I'm like, nah, I'm turning the, the page. <laughs> <laughs> That's just easier for me to do. Let's see here. Go in like this. And this color is slightly gray. You'll be able to see it's slightly gray when it dries, which is why you need to layer it. There we go. So she's beginning to come to life. You can see there. Now I can see that I'm beginning to run out of color and that's a disaster when you custom mix your colors. Right? <laughs> no. Uh. I'll just have to mix it up again. That's not too bad. I know approximately how much I put in. Remember, you're a painter. This is your interpretation. So if you have to mix colors again, don't worry. Just get it close. It is your artwork, so you don't have to worry too much about, you know, having it be. I don't worry about it being perfect. I don't. Because I can chalk it all up to, well, it's the hand of the artist. That was my interpretation. I intended that, right? <laughs> That's what happens when we're artists. We can do that. Okay, so I'll have to mix some more color for over here. And you know that I generally don't finish my artwork on the um, on the show. I will finish it up later and then I'll show it on my social media when it's finished. But I actually like doing this. You see how there's some areas where I went over twice and I only went over once. So I like that variation. Now I do need to put the black around the eye here and the few eyelashes. So I'm going to, hey, what is that? Welcome back in. So I'm going to do that using uh, the marker to get my, remember I said I like to do my lines with the marker. Let me make sure that this is where you can see it. Yep. So I'm gonna, st I'm using my picture as a reference to do the eye, the black part around the outside of the eye. Because what we did, was I applied the drawing gum. So let me show you the drawing gum. I applied the drawing gum, which is a masking fluid, into the areas of her eyes where I wanted to preserve the white. And then once the drawing gum was dry, then I was able to um, paint the watercolor color over top. And now that that is dry, I can remove this drawing gum. Now, a lot of people will just remove it with their finger. I try not to do that because I generally have paint all over my hands. I mean, you probably too, too, Florida glass girl, or you have like glass dust all over you, right? <laughs> From being in the studio. So um, what I like to do is I use a uh, rubber cement eraser. That's what this is called, a rubber cement eraser, or sometimes it's called rubber cement pickup. 
And what you do, it's very gummy. And what you do is now that this is all dry, the watercolor is dry around it, I can come in here and I can pick up the drawing gum. And then the white of the eye is preserved. So there it is. Just like that. Now, cool, right? Now, this area over here, instead of being perfectly white, I want it to just have a light, 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 light wash of blue. So you don't have to leave it white. It just re-exposes the watercolor paper. And now I can go back in there with a small brush. Let's use a small brush. What I want to do is I want to put a lot of water in here so that it's not as blue as what we had before. Oh, see, that is still too blue. I'm telling you, these paints are so concentrated. I want it to be just a hint of blue, just a hint. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding a whole bunch of water to it so that I get just a light wash of blue. And I'm going back in there with just a teeny tiny bit of a wash there. So now instead of it being, hey, foxhound, welcome in, welcome in. Jean Rizzo. Huh. I haven't heard of Jean Rizzo. I'll have to write that down. Let me write that down. And then I will go, is that um, Jean as in a man Jean, I believe? G-E-N-E. -E. And let me write that down. Jean. Jean Rizzo. And for those on um, YouTube, I am a watercolor artist. Okay. I am uh, watching the feed also on Whatnot. We're having a chat over on Whatnot. So Jean, G-E-N-E-R-I-Z-Z-O. So I will check out Jean Rizzo and um, see what their watercolor art is like. <laughs> but uh yeah, so I was able to go back in and, and just add just a hint of that blue and sort of soften the edges here so that um, it's not totally, totally, totally stark white. It still will look like it's part of the painting instead. But over here, I still have the, um, the drawing gum and I'm just gonna leave that there for now, but I wanted to show you how you, it's so simple to remove it. You can remove it with your finger, make sure your fingers are clean. What I find happens sometimes though, is that if the watercolor here is, uh, depending on the color, sometimes the colors will come off just from the warmth uh, or the moisture in your hand. And then you tend to get, uh, the color will get messed up. And that's why I use the rubber cement pickup instead, because then I'm assured that it just, it's only going to be lifting that up and it's not going to be putting anything down. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for looking at that with me.